In this video, we're going to use Excel VBA to calculate the difference in months and days between two dates. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. I have a data set of loan records. In this third column, I have the maturity dates for each loan. And over here in cell F2, I have a start date. So when I run this macro, you can see in column D, it returns the number of full months and any leftover days. So for this first example, you can see not a full month has passed between the start date and this maturity date. It returns zero months and 11 days. The second example, it is just a few days shy of nine full months. So it returns eight full months and 28 leftover days. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 or going up to the developer ribbon and clicking on this visual basic button. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert and then module. Now to save time, I've already created the code and I'm going to quickly run through it. So we have a subroutine called return months and days. We begin by declaring our variables. We have a variable called WB for workbook, a variable called WS for worksheet. We have a last row variable. We have a variable called start date and one called end date. Both of those are the data type date. We have a variable called months between and one called leftover days. And those are the data type long because they're number differences between the two dates. We have in our next few lines of code where we set up our object variables. They have to begin with the keyword set because workbooks and worksheets are object variables. So keyword set WB is equal to this workbook, the one we're in now. Then we have set worksheet variable equal to the workbook variable we just created, worksheets and sheet one, because that is the sheet we're on. We have a variable called last row that is equal to our worksheet. Cells for the row input, we have rows and count and the column input that is column one, which is column A. So this counts every single row on the entire spreadsheet, which takes us down to the very last cell in column A. From there, we end Excel up. That's like hitting control up arrow. That would take us to this last cell containing values in column A. And we get that row number and store it in this variable. We have a variable called start date, which is equal to our worksheet and then the range F2 to get that value, which is our begin date value. So that is stored in that variable. We then have our for loop and what a for loop does is it repeats a series of actions, which are all here based on a beginning point and an ending point that we use specify. So in this case, we want to begin on row two and go all the way to our last row containing values. So we have a variable called I that represents each row. So I starts out at a value of two and goes until the last row variable. While this loop is running, we're going to create an end date variable in each gyration of the loop that is equal to our worksheet cells the row input, whatever row we're currently on. So that starts out at row two, always going to be column three because that's a maturity date column. So in the first gyration of the loop that gets cell C2, gets the value, stores it in this variable here. We then have a variable called months between. Here we're going to use the date difference function and that has three inputs. The first one is the type of difference we want. We want months. So we put an M there and then we have our start date variable and our end date variable. That gets the months between, but there's one very important thing you need to know about the date difference function. It does not consider days when taking the difference between the months. So 
if we look and use the date difference between our start date, February 25th, and our first maturity date, March 7th, the date difference function is going to return a difference of one month. Well, you can see it's not even close to a month. It's really just a few days. So we need to account for that later in our code. So down here in this if statement, that's what we're doing. So we're saying if the date part function, so this function simply extracts the part of a date. In this case, we want to extract the days. So we put a D here. If the date part function days from our start date, which is 25, is greater than the date part days from our end date variable, then we want to set our months between variable, which we defined up here, equal to whatever value is currently stored in the months between variable minus one month. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. We just want to keep the variable as it was before. So let me show you a few examples here. So if we apply that if statement to these dates, the days here, 25, is greater than the days in this date here, 7. So that's going to take the one month that the date difference function returns and subtract one from it which is correct because there's really zero months between these two dates, zero full months. Now, on the other hand, if we applied that if statement to this maturity date, the days in this date is greater than the days in the start date, so it would not subtract one from the difference, which it shouldn't because there's really only one full month so that should remain as it is so that is what the if statement is doing and then we have our final variable called leftover days and again we're going to use the date difference this time we want to get days and for our second input where we normally input a start date we have a, another function called the date add function and this adds to an existing date in this case we want to add months so we put an M in this first input and then the number of months we want to add is our months between variable which is either going to be this variable here or this variable here depending on our if statement added to our start date so we're essentially taking our original start date and adding the number of full months between that original start date and the end date to our original start date. So that becomes our new start date against our original end date to get the days, which is stored in our leftover days variable after factoring true full months between those two dates. Finally, we're ready to write the output stored in this variable to column D. So back on our worksheet in cells, our I variable, which is whatever row we're on, and column four, we're going to input the number of full months in our months between variable, use the AND symbol to join it to some text, space, months, comma, space, use another AND symbol to join it to our leftover days variable. Use another AND symbol to join this to some more text, space days. That gets written to the cell. We then have next counter variable. So that takes us back up to the top, increments this from two to three, and this repeats itself until we've gone all the way through our last row variable, our endpoint. At that point, it exits the subroutine and ends, I'm sorry, exits the loop, and then we end our subroutine. So once you have written your code, what you can do is come up to the developer ribbon, go to insert, select this first icon for a button. 
draw it on here and then you should be prompted to link it to your subroutine name and then you can right click and edit the text to change the button name and at that point you can run your macro and see the result. Well that is all for now. See you in the next one.